Welcome to today's History Brief. Today we're going to talk about the surrender at Appomattox during the U.S. Civil War and why it is that IU has a unique role in it. That surrender happened on April the 9th, 1865, right out 155 years ago this week. So let's start with a quick breakdown on what was going on that led to General Lee surrendering the Confederate Army of Northern Virginia uh, to Grant uh, at that time. And so it was a quick layman's chronology of what happened. So Grant has uh, Lee's retreat cut off uh, and has him on the run. And they're chasing each other over several days uh, through the, the Appomattox area. Uh, and there's a series of battles that happens along that time, uh, including one of the, the last battles of the Civil War uh, that took the life of uh, an IU alum. But that's a whole different story. Uh, Grant sends a letter to Lee asking for his surrender or asking of him if he wants to talk about surrender. And there are several letters that are kind of exchanged back and forth over a, a, a roughly three day period uh, during this time. And Lee agrees to meet. Well, the, the way that Lee agrees to meet is he's going to he sends a letter to Grant, says this is where I'm going to be. I'm going to ride out in front of my army and I'm going to stay at this location uh, and you send people to come find me so that we can talk. Uh, and when Lee goes, he only takes two people with him. Uh, he takes an orderly, uh, in other words, somebody that's kind of managing his horse and his equipment and stuff. And he takes his personal secretary, Colonel Charles Marshall. And those are the only three Confederates from the Army of Northern Virginia that go forward with him or that go forward to this meeting. So if you read the, the uh, stories, the information written afterwards by people who were there, uh, which is what these paintings are depicted about, there, were, there weren't any photographs taken at the moment, there weren't any sketches or drawings that were made in the moment, uh, but there were paintings that came out afterwards about Lee's surrender. Uh, and the, the, if you look at those paintings and all the depictions of them, what you generally will see is uh, two uh, Confederates in gray and a whole series of Union officers uh, at the, the McLean farmhouse uh, where they did the surrender at. And so uh, those depictions kind of show you that, you know, there's really this small contingent of uh, Confederates uh, and then this larger group of Union officers. But one of the things that kind of gets included or left out, depending on how you put it, uh, Colonel Babcock uh, is the, the person who is sent out to find Lee and help him decide on where the surrender is going to take place at. And so uh, Babcock and Marshall are the ones that are sort of deciding on what would be a suitable facility for Grant and Lee to meet at and do all of this work. Well, uh, very often the, the stories depict that Babcock had an orderly with him. Uh, that orderly was a guy named Captain William McKee Dunn. Uh, and so Dunn was helping decide where uh, the surrender would take place at. And, and then he's one of the Union officers that's kind of coming and going during this time. But he's a low level enough officer. He doesn't show up in the paintings. Uh, but if you read through the chronologies and things that are written afterwards, Babcock and others definitely depict him as being there as well as he, he talks about it himself uh, in his own writings. So the question is, why does this matter? Well, I'm about to get to that. Colonel Charles Marshall, who we talked about, uh, General Lee's personal secretary, he was actually a faculty member at Indiana University from 1849 to 1852. He taught mathematics uh, as, long as, as well as a couple other subjects. That orderly that I mentioned that was there during this time, Brigadier General William McKee Dunn, uh, he'd later go on to be a Brigadier General, he was a captain at the time, uh, was IU class of 1832. And as near as we've been, I've been able to tell, uh, it would appear that IU was, the, besides West Point, the only other school that was represented on both sides during the surrender at Appomattox, one of the, the seminal moments of the Civil War. And we have uh, IU folks that are involved on both sides uh, with making that surrender happen. Um, so William McKee Dunn's a fascinating individual. I may eventually do uh, an entire uh, video about him. I mentioned him before in our uh, episode about Washington, D.C. He was involved with uh, founding the community of Dunloring um, in Virginia. Uh, and I, I did a little bit about him and his um, uh, uh, gravesite, trying to find it there in D.C. and some other things. So, uh, But anyway, he, we were represented on both sides at that surrender at Appomattox. 
If you would like to learn more about IU in the Civil War, we have an upcoming presentation on that, uh, or I have an upcoming presentation on that as part of our bicentennial series uh, here at the university. And because of the current uh, stay-at-home orders uh, in response to coronavirus and COVID-19, uh, it has now gone online, and if you would like to register for that online event, uh, I will put the link in the uh, uh, description for this session. Uh, it's also on your screen right now. Uh, if you have a QR code reader on your smartphone, then you can just hold your phone up and it'll also follow this link, uh, and you can uh, get to it from there. But it'll be May 11th uh, at 6.30 p.m., and uh, hopefully you'll I'll see you there, and, and I look forward to having you there. And as always, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm going to put some links up on here uh, so that you can do that, or you can look at some of our other past videos. Uh, you can subscribe to our channel and follow us on YouTube, and we're going to keep the series going uh, through the end of the academic year, so Ju July, June, sometime in there. Uh, we're going to keep going and try to get these out weekly, uh, even while we're working from home. So, all right, we'll see you next week.